Here we are. Um, okay. Um, I, as I told you, I really appreciate your your book. I think it's, a, but you know that already. But still, <laughs> I think that it's a very important book, and every every politician should read it. But not only politician, because also citizens. Otherwise, they, they won't be able to to choose the right politician. Um, and as I told you, of course, I I would, I would want also to touch Europe because that's uh, it makes more sense for our readers, but. There's a piece of news which forced me to start from there because the piece of news, as you perfectly know, is the article in the, the, the New York Times, which says something that could surprise everyone but you. Because, I mean, you, you start the book by saying that Trump was pr pr proud of himself, saying that he was sly because he didn't pay the taxes. And then somewhere else you quote the, the, the president of J.P. Morgan that in 1933, uh, said that uh, he didn't almost pay any tax on 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 income. Uh, I, I will start from there. Uh, Trump did that, but he's not the only one. How is that possible? <laughs> yeah, so it, it is striking, and indeed, you know that that's why we we wanted to open our book with this, where where Trump busted, you know, never. Uh, paying taxes, and it, it's, it is a striking example uh, that uh, everybody can understand that the tax system doesn't work well. If yeah. uh, somebody who is a, a billionaire, uh, or certainly, I mean, we don't know whether he's a billionaire, but he's certainly very rich, uh, is able to get away uh, without uh, paying any taxes. And in the case of a, a politician, as opposed to a businessman like uh, J.P. Morgan, yeah. It's even worse because he's been elected uh, to run, actually, uh, the, the tax system. So if you have, at the very head, somebody who thinks uh, it's actually great if you're super rich and you don't pay taxes, and that's how uh, society should work, uh, it's, it's going to be a problem uh, because government is, uh, first and foremost, you know, pulling together resources uh, yeah. through taxation, uh, to uh, uh, for the public good. Okay. And so uh, here, you know, so we don't know the details of how uh, he did that, but what is clear is that he was extremely aggressive yeah. in uh, trying always, you know, to push, you know, to be at, at the border uh, of uh, legality. You know, so that was something that was very visible with the uh, inheritance tax. He managed, you yeah. know, to really undervalued the inheritance he got from uh, uh, his father. Yeah. And also, with the income tax now, he is in a fight, you know, according to the New York Times article about, uh, 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 you know, whether he has to repay back, you know, 100 million, you know, in, uh, in a big tax refund he got. It's not clear whether or not he was uh, allowed to get that, that, that refund. So he also exemplifies you know, the modern era in the U.S. Uh, where the IRS lost power because yeah. society spent, you know, and, uh, avoiding taxes is the good thing to do. You know, that's what Reagan, I, that's how uh, uh, Reagan yeah. put it, you know, the government yeah. is there to, it's a theft. to take yeah. away from you. So yeah. he really uh, exemplifies that. And, 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 you know, Trump can do that now because that's where we are. You know, probably he wouldn't have been able to uh, uh, do this before yes, uh, I know that. Just to close this this preliminary chapter, I know this is beyond, of course, the, the scope of the book and and your specialty. But do you think that this piece of news will ha will hurt Trump, or it won't make a dent in his reputation? <laughs> it, it, it's hard to know. It, it's certainly has never. Uh, you know, he's already said it right there in the debate. That makes me smart. You know, four years ago, he yeah. did not pay taxes, so he didn't really deny it. Yeah. Now it, it's possible because it's so obvious. They got such comprehensive data. You know, there is that number that he paid only seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes in seventeen and eighteen. That might, uh, you know, and, and there are so many years of data. Maybe it will impress. Uh, the public, but it, but in some ways, you know, I wasn't that surprised.
by the analysis, you know, by the numbers, they are more or less consistent with uh, what we uh, thought. Yeah, that, that's exactly why I ask you, because if there is one person in the world who, who should not be surprised, it, it's you, be, be, for the reason we will just... Uh, and, and then, also at that time, the, 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 uh, the, the circumstance that you quote in the book, I mean, it was very adamant in... I mean, it's not, it's not, it was not trying to hide. It was proud that he didn't pay. So, uh, sincerely, I, I could be wrong, of course, but... Uh, it won't make such an impact because I mean the guy is uh, is very is very uh, straightforward in. <laughs> yes. yeah. Where it can hurt him more is actually the fact that he reported so consistently such big losses that might dent ah. you know the view that si. the supporters has that he's a savvy businessman. You know yeah. the strongest uh, in management of the economy. You know. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, and so maybe people say, but he's been making losses, you know, for decades. Maybe yeah. that we know. Yeah. So him. not because he's a bad citizen, but because he's a bad entrepreneur. That's right. That could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we will see. We will see very very soon. Anyway, going more to 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 the book. I mean, um, it hasn't gone always this way. I mean, it wasn't like that before. Uh, I, I knew it already, but, but I mean, reading your book made me re rethink about it, that the, the marginal tax until 1963 in the U.S. was up to 91%. No? And, you, and you calculate that until 1980, the average was 78%. Uh, so I'm asking you, I mean, I already know the answer, but I want to, to try to... Uh, reformulate, uh, summarize what went wrong. I mean, <laughs> uh, from from then to now. You know, so indeed, yes. Historically, the U.S. in the middle of the 20th century had a successful, very progressive tax system that yeah. was imposing very high tax rate uh, on the rich. I think you have a clear break with the uh, election of uh, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. I mean, we know that. Uh, Western economy slowed down in the 70s, you know, the oil yeah. crisis, uh, the, the inflation, and therefore that sowed doubt about the model, you know, of a progressive tax or the development of the welfare state. And there in the US, you had the alternative model, which was Reagan. Yeah. Let's have free markets and let's not have the government yeah. meddle with the economy. And indeed, uh, the, one of the key, we, we discussed that in, in the book, one of the key messages when Reagan came in is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, people uh, should be able to keep what they make and uh, taxes, you know, and therefore uh, the moral thing to do is for people to try and pay as little <laughs> as they can. And so from there, you know, presidents of power, you know, they talk and they have influence then in how uh, people are going to behave uh, in society. And basically, right after Reagan was elected, we saw an explosion in tax evasion or tax avoidance yeah. uh, through business losses, uh, uh, precisely because... Tax shelter, yeah. Tax yeah. shelters, yeah. yes. Because... Uh, 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 the you know the IRS was no longer going to be as aggressive, given that the president has said you know it was good uh, to try and pay as little taxes. So that's how you unravel tax progressivity. First, you let tax avoidance develop, yeah. and then once tax avoidance is pervasive, you say, look, the, our tax system on the books it looks very progressive with those very high tax rates, but that really doesn't mean anything because it's all avoidance. And therefore, you say, you know, look, we need to cut tax rates. They no longer work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, something that I didn't know before reading the book, it's another little piece of information, but which is particularly interesting right now, uh, on the eve on the next presidential election. And when you say that when Reagan passed the, the, the tax cut in 1988, which made 
uh, the, 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 the rate, the lowest in the world, 28%. Among those who voted for, for that measure, there was Joe Biden. Yes. And, and then I, made, I had some fun with your simulator in the Tax Justice Now website. And um, I choose between the, the alternative tax models. And I realized that if you choose the, the Joe Biden tax model, it doesn't make a big, a big difference from where you are now. Is that correct? Well, it, it, it is in the sense that in the, in the Democratic primary, it's clear, yes, that Joe Biden are at the most moderate platform in yeah. terms of how much he wants to increase taxes on the rich. Uh, but that's because uh, the other candidates were radical yeah. relative to what have existed. Is the, the, the Biden plan is in keeping, you know, with what, uh, Hillary Clinton proposed with what uh, Barack Obama uh, did or yeah. wanted uh, 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 to do. It is, you know, in that centrist democratic uh, mold. And it's true that historically, yes, it is striking that the big tax reform, you know, of 1986, uh, the Tax Reform Act of 1986, uh, got almost unanimous vote in Congress. And that's the uh, reform that lowers dramatically the top tax rates down to. Uh, 28%. Because at that point, we know Reagan had done very well its job. He had convinced politicians and society that high tax rates on the rich just couldn't work. And that's why you got consensus, you know, to lower uh, that, that, that top tax rate. Yeah, but, but you don't seem particularly striking by the fact that Biden and, and Obama and, and Clinton are are consistent in a way with, with the tax system that you have right now. I mean, Trump, of course, made it worse, but, but still, I mean... Uh... Yes, no, but, but, but you know, this is the genius, if you want, of Ronald Reagan. He yeah. managed to convince everybody except, you know, the extreme left, uh, that moderate tax rates on the rich was the uh, reasonable thing to do, and it's only in this cycle, I mean, we got it a little bit with Bernie Sanders, you know, four years ago yeah. as well, that you get uh, politicians with a real shot, you know, at uh, winning the primary that say, no, uh, we should tax the rich very substantially. And that's <laughs> a new development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, according to you, uh, at a certain point in the book, you mention 60% as the optimal uh, tax rate for the rich. Uh, how do you come out with that, with that number? So, you know, so <laughs> first, you know, I, I, you, you have to be careful. It's, it's not up for economists, you know, to say what oh. is the optimal tax rate. Of course, that yeah. number is what we think uh, you could collect from the rich, you could collect 60% of their income to uh, maximize, you know, the tax revenue you collect uh, from them. Uh, meaning that given that there are ways, you know, to avoid uh, 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 the tax, you can't say, you know, we're going to collect 100% because then, you know, you, you, you shrink the tax base too much. But given where we are, we think 60% is a reasonable number, but What's more important, you know, in our book is to change the structure, to make the tax system difficult or impossible to uh, avoid and uh, evade. Those structural reforms are the most important because without uh, a tax system that's hard to avoid, it's hard to do very progressive taxation. Um, and in, in that respect, uh, um, because there, before going there, before going to, to do um, tax havens and, and other things and, and the industry of avoidance, as you, as you call it, uh, because th the fact that the rich be be became even richer and the poor even poorer um, has got to do with many things, of course. One of the things that, that you quote, and I think they had uh, an important role, is the uh, lowering of the taxes on corporation. You you said, I mean, you calculate that, I mean, 
Trump gave another blow to, to, to that uh, rate going from 35 to 21% in 2017. But also, you, you remind, and we, we get closer to Europe, that also Macron and Gordon Brown had made similar moves, and also Italy has made similar moves. Uh, and then you take into account Ireland, which is 12.5%, or Bermuda, as you, as you remind, I mean, talking about Google, which is 0%. I mean, uh, to make a long story short, from 1985 to now, the tax rates uh, on uh, corporation uh, halved. Um, was that once again? Was that in inevitable? I mean, how can you? What can we do about that? Yeah. So uh, it, we think you know. In the end, that's a choice that societies made. But we are societies. You know, the Western economies of Europe. Uh, uh, Northern America, most countries actually, it's almost worldwide, are organized on the principle of tax competition, meaning that we make it relatively easy for multinationals to uh, we, to, to uh, allow them to report profits in no tax jurisdiction. Yes. You know, so for Google is a striking example where they report a very large fraction of their profits to uh, in Bermuda, because yes. that's where they put, you know, their search engine uh, yes. uh, 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 product patent. Uh, and and because it's so easy for big multinationals to uh, to to move uh, their profits, that gives uh, uh, that puts enormous pressures on countries, you know, to lower their tax rates because if their tax rates are still relatively high. They lose, you know, uh, the multinationals shift their profits uh, away. But our point, you know, in the book is that this is a, a choice. That is, it, it wouldn't be that difficult for countries to decide we are no longer uh, going to let uh, multinationals get away, you know, with uh, 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 reporting uh, a, a large fraction of their profits in tax havens. And this is not, you know, uh, an utopian uh, idea, you know, that's something that's debated both in the United States, in Europe. What are the type of reforms uh, we can do? And, and one very concrete one that uh, has been proposed actually by Joe Biden and other candidates you know, on the Democratic side is to say there's going to be a minimum tax, say, for U.S. multinationals who report, you know, profits in tax seven. So if you report profits in uh, uh, Bermuda, where you pay zero, you'll have to pay at least uh, 21%. That's what uh, Joe Biden proposes to the United States. So if you are in Ireland and you and you pay 20, yes, you'll have to pay you know an extra 9% to get to 21% uh, to the U.S. And that way, uh, getting your profits in in, in tax havens. Uh, no longer is no longer uh, viable, you know, to uh, uh, to avoid uh, uh, taxes, and that is not a, a complicated reform to implement technically because companies are already forced, you know, to report how much profits they make in each uh, jurisdiction. So for corporations, it's tax avoidance, meaning legal tax avoidance. Yes, they don't try, you know, to hide. Uh, 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 profits, uh, you know, through uh, outright uh, tax evasion. And Europe is also moving in that direction with uh, what's discussed, you know, as the digital tax, you know. Uh, yes. Europe realizes that those big uh, 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 information technology companies, you know, like Google, Facebook, they have lots of customers uh, in uh, uh, Europe. So they get a lot of revenue, you know, from European uh, uh, users, and yet they pay almost no tax. Yeah. And so there are ways, you know, to try uh, and make sure, you know, they pay something commensurate with the business they really do uh, uh, in Europe. In our view, you know, in our book is that it's not just the uh, information technology companies on all sectors, you know, uh, do it. So that's why we prefer uh, a more comprehensive uh, reform of the type, you know, that say Joe Biden is uh, discussing uh, 
is proposing by that. Yes, but somewhere else in the book, yourself, I mean, you say that the European constitution, so to speak, is made in a way that for fiscal matters, there, there needs to be a, a unanimous vote. And so Luxembourg uh, or, or the Netherlands, uh, for that matter, are the first to say, ha ha, no way, we don't want to do any digital tax because, I mean, it's our prime export, I mean, to attract or Ireland. Uh, yes. How do you, do you circumvent that kind of opposition? Yeah, so it's true uh, that Europe is still, you know, on the principle of unanimity uh, for uh, uh, tax regulations at the European level, so you are never going to succeed uh, that way. Yeah. So that's why the move has to come from a handful of large European countries, you know, Germany, France, uh, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, bending together because they are the ones who lose the most, you know, in corporate tax revenue from uh, uh, this tax competition uh, game. And if jointly, so it's, it's, it wouldn't be a EU policy, it would be a policy emanating from some uh, large countries that say we are going to police our multinationals, you know, by imposing minimum taxes, and we are going to tax foreign multinationals that do business here, you know, based on how much they sell in our country. If they do that and say the United States does that, you already have a very large fraction, you know, of uh, the advanced economies doing this, and hopefully it will set, uh, you know, an example uh, that then can be followed. But I agree with you that it's hopeless to want, you know, the 27 uh, uh, in, in Europe, you know, to get unanimous. You never get anywhere uh, that way. And that's why, you know, uh, yeah. there's been so little progress. Yeah. But you are also aware that recently uh, President Trump uh, threatened France because they wanted to, to go ahead with some form of digital tax or web tax, yes. whatever you want to call it. And uh, aren't you afraid that even if the, these countries that you just quoted come together, uh, there will be, I mean, a flight of multinational that will go, all of them, in Ireland, because they say, I mean, we can continue doing yeah. so, so, So when you do this type of reform, you have to be careful also to make it difficult for your to regulate, you know, how multinationals can change uh, countries, headquarters. But that is also something that can be regulated. And uh, very simply, you know, the Obama administration tightened uh, uh, the regulations for U.S. multinationals, you know, to become, to change, you know, nationality. And since then, not a single one, actually, uh, has changed nationality. So, you know, if your business has been in a given country, you know, historically, and you continue to be business, a country can say, look, it doesn't matter where you tell me your headquarter is, you are considered uh, a company, you know, subject to uh, 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 this uh, jurisdiction for tax purposes. Okay, so anyway, you are relatively optimist that even though not going through the consensus of the 27 countries that make up Europe, uh, a difference could be made by four big countries coming together and saying, look, we're going to be serious about this and we, as uh, Joe Biden probably will do uh, if, yeah. he, if he is elected, I mean, we will charge the difference that you, you, that you pay in the country that you choose uh, compared to the, our minimum standard. That could be done. Yes, yes. And, and I think actually, you know, you, you mentioned Trump, you know, wanting to block that. I think, yes, the outcome of the U.S. election is very important because yeah. if Biden does it, it makes it very easy or the big countries in Europe to say, look, we are just going to do like the United States is doing. You know, so that's why, you know, for those things, one big country uh, has enormous influence. In the same way that Ronald Reagan, you know, shepherd, you know, that era of yeah. increasing tax progressivity, if you go in reverse, you know, and you establish a new system to tax multinational corporations from the U.S., you can have an extremely a large influence starting from scratch you know it's harder for European countries that are smaller and even 
you know, if Europe is big, collective big, you still need some coordination, at least of the, of the big ones, and uh, that's more challenging. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, we will see. Uh, the polls so far are a little more op optimist than they were a few weeks ago. I mean, I'm talking about the US, and, and we will see soon. Um, going back to the avoidance industry and the the tax habits, no? you you calculate that um, worldwide multinational forty percent of multinational registered their profits uh, in some. Uh, tax haven in a, in a way or in the other, which is uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, it's it's huge, you know. And these tax haven are not necessarily tropical tax haven, but they are Ireland or or Luxembourg or the Netherlands. Uh, something that I I wasn't at all aware of was that you you, you talk about stateless entities. This is very new, according to, I don't know, at least for me. Yeah, so, so this is almost like a, 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 a technical uh, detail, but uh, companies manage, you know, to play uh, one tax system of a country against another as countries don't define uh, profits exactly in the same way to effectively get some of their profits taxed neither by one country nor the other. So effectively those profits fall into the, 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 the cracks, and that's why they are called, you know, stateless uh, profits. I see. Um, but, but, but this is not huge, I expect, no? Well, it's, 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 it's not huge in the sense that, uh, but, it, but it is, you know, it's, no, it's, it's not huge. Qualitatively, yeah. it still shows you, you know, the absurdities. We yes, have. yes, the absurdity for sure. Yeah. When, yes, when countries don't coordinate, you know, the definition of what is profit and so on. Okay, so just to make it clear, it, these are not made up states. I mean, it's just a matter of calling them stateless because they don't fall neither in one jurisdiction nor in the other. I mean, it's not that they made up. Uh, uh, fiction, fictional is states. Okay, that 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 was even more absurd. But we we don't go so far. Okay, um, so among the solution that you propose, and I'm asking you if they also work would work for the European Union, there are basically three things. Um, I'm I'm trying to translate from Italian here because I've read the book in Italian. Um, uh, last issue taxmen. I mean, the, 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 the state, I mean, if they, the, the multinational don't pay somewhere else, uh, I can step in and say, okay, now you pay me the difference, okay? Yes. We, which is what yes. also Joe yes. Biden apparently wants wants to do, no? Oh, you, you also call this uh, de defensive uh, tax, something like that? Yes, yes. So, so th that's right. You, you police your multinationals, that is, you collect uh, uh, taxes on them, and for foreign multinationals, if they are not policed by their own countries, you make sure that if they sell here in your country, you uh, tax them as well. And and you can do that. I mean, uh, legally speaking, you 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 could do that. Yes, you you you, you can do it. You know, I mean, that's something Joe Biden wants to do. And that's something, you know, big European countries uh, could do uh, unilaterally uh, as well, yes. Despite of the fact, as we said before, that, uh, I mean, Europe as a whole will never allow that. I mean, see... Well, you, you know, so this wouldn't be at first, you know, a, a EU policy. Yeah, It'd yes. A policy, you know, from Italy yes, to yes. Germany, uh, 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 from France. But with the hope that if this policy is shown to be successful, it could be adapted, you know, adopted yes, at yes, a yes. wider uh, EU level. Mm -hmm. Because this reminds me very closely some different attitudes uh, among uh, different European states. Your, ca your country of origin, for instance, has been tough in the past and, and now also vis-a-vis uh, -vis of some platforms. I mean. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about Airbnb, for instance, or 
in the past with Google. I mean, with these companies that are international champions of tax avoidance, they have been particularly tough. This is not the case with, with my country, which is maybe things are changing a little bit. So these, because, you know, the, the great alibi here in, in my country as well, but is that we cannot do anything. I mean, this is a problem so big that only only Europe altogether can tackle it, or at least can try to tackle it. You are saying this is not true. There's no alibi. Yes, the, 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 this is not true in the sense that uh, uh, Europe is a, is a tough case because Europe is, as an organization, is something that has very weak power because you know of this unanimity of the yes. environment. And so I think, you know, it's, it's a flaw in the design yes. of the European Union, uh, 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 if you will. And therefore, you have to, you can't start with that. You, you, you have to go around. But I think, you know, yes, it is very feasible, even for one single large country, you know, like France could decide, you know, to be tougher. You know, look, Google and Facebook or Airbnb, you are doing a lot of business uh, in France, and we are going to tax you, you know, according to, to the business. Uh, it might, you know, ruffle feathers, but uh, France is a sovereign country, and there is there's nothing, you know, in European law that would prevent it from uh, 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 adopting, you know, tougher taxes on those uh, foreign multinationals. Okay. Uh, another thing that you propose is that Public Protection Bureau, something that could, uh, I mean, monitor the tax um, avoidance uh, industry, if I understand correctly. Do you think something like that could be done also in Europe? Yeah, the, you know, we need uh, systematic information on the extent of tax avoidance and uh, 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 tax evasion so that uh, those things are clearly, you know, in the in the public debate, and that uh, countries and governments know uh, about them. And so, right now, this role is done at the European level, you know, more by the, the, the OECD is the, the body, you know, uh, which publishes uh, such uh, statistics, but. The OECD is rarely into the business of directly, you know, looking at uh, uh, tax uh, tax scams, and I think that's why you need, you know, it could start, you know, as a sub uh, 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 group, you know, within the, the, the OECD, but it needs to be highly visible, given how important this is, you know, for the overall functioning of uh, taxes and tax progressivity. Yeah. And now we go to the third pillar of, of your uh, solution, um, a progressive tax on every form of uh, income, no? included uh, dividends, uh, uh, the, the, the interest that you can make by owning stocks and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, this is probably the, the most uh, ambitious uh, part of uh, um, of, of the scheme because uh, maybe because uh, so far as you perfectly know taxes have been considered as kind of crypt political kryptonite no one wants to touch it because it's radioactive I mean uh, former president of, of France I mean Hollande uh, also I mean won by saying I want to put a, a patrimonial tax on those who made more I don't remember more than one million or I don't, I don't remember and was thinking about a marginal tax rate of 75 percent if I'm not mistaken and the, and you won and the day after it was enough that uh, Gérard Depardieu said uh, I, I will go to to Russia because I can't live in Sasha and, and and nothing was done how do you think that uh, a politician can overcome the price that comes attached to to such ambition goal well, you know, what is true is that uh, in Europe right now, it's hard to do tax progressivity, very progressive taxes, because of the threat of mobility. Yeah. You know, and indeed, that's a reason why actually the progressive wealth taxes have been abandoned, most recently, you know, by France and uh, uh, Macron, because if you were a wealthy person in France, you could easily 
avoid the tax by moving to London or Rome. Yes. Uh, you know, and after a year, you would no longer be subject, you know, to the French uh, uh, tax. But that, again, is uh, something you could change. The, the U.S. has a very different system. In the U.S., if you move to another country and you are very rich, you remain subject to U.S. taxes, uh, you know, with the credit for the taxes you pay in your other country. But... Uh, 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 that means that as long as you don't renounce your citizenship, your U.S. citizenship, you remain on the hook for uh, U.S. taxes. So I'm not saying Europe should, a country like France should do something as extreme, but at least it could say, look, for five years, even if you move to London, you are still subject to uh, uh, French taxes yes. if you are in a country where they don't ask you to pay nearly as much uh, taxes as, as in France. And that makes the tax harder to uh, uh, avoid, you know, through mobility. Europe was also very, very weak uh, in terms of uh, tax evasion through uh, offshore accounts. And in France, yes. you know, in, in Europe are often Swiss accounts. And actually, you know, we had the minister of the budget under Hollande, who had himself, you know, uh, was himself yes, uh, yes. paying taxes, <laughs> Kaizak. Yes. <laughs> So, so small wonder that he wasn't keen, you know, on <laughs> tightening, you know, those rules. Uh, but uh, that is something that can change. And actually, the United States, uh, under Barack Obama, had really changed the regulations by forcing all foreign institutions, like Swiss banks, uh, to report to the United States on bank accounts or accounts owned, you know, by U.S. citizens. And yes. that, you know, uh, really changed the deal because now an American person can no longer open, you know, uh, an, an account uh, abroad without having, you know, that reporting requirement. And actually, most recently, you know, a number of European countries have followed uh, the U.S. Uh, model and a lot of those offshore accounts have come to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that today it's actually a lot harder uh, thanks to the U.S., you know, uh, to avoid taxes, you know, through uh, Swiss bank accounts. You're talking about the so-called FATCA, no? FATCA, the, the, yeah, yeah. Foreign yeah, yeah. Tax Compliance Act. Yes, yes. yes. That, that, that made a difference, according to you. That, that was uh, yes. an, important, an important law. O okay. Um, let's, go more, let's talk about more the rich, the rich now, the rich people now. Um, um, there's an example that you made a couple of times, which was very well known, but it becomes even more interesting now when you talk about Warren Buffett. Okay, I mean, it's well known, it's uh, legendary now that Warren Buffett pays less taxes than, it, than his secretary, Debbie. And uh, but you, you make a step forward in a way, because when Buffett presents himself as a kind of champion vis-a-vis -vis of Trump, of good citizen who pay 1.8 million taxes, you do the, the math and you discover that it's a drop in, in, in the ocean, okay? Um, how is that possible that not even the left, nor, nor in, in, the, in the US, nor in the in in Europe, really never there to to get into into that and to say loud and clear that rich people have to pay the taxes. The right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, yes, Warren Buffett is a, is a really striking example because he's probably center left. Yeah, so yeah. He doesn't like. Uh, yeah. But, but Trump yet yeah, has been really good. You know, so he, he, he did it fully legally. You yes, know, yes, he yes. Do illegal stuff yes, of course. Trump, but yeah. the end result is very similar. Yes. Here is a billionaire that ends up paying very, very little yeah. uh, in, 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 in taxes. Uh, and, and that shows you, you know, yes, the, the limit of the, the current uh, income tax, meaning that if you are really a billionaire, you typically make money, you know, through big business. Yes. But as long as the big business doesn't distribute you 
you know, the, the profits in the form of dividends. Yes. So you don't sell your business, you don't have to pay any individual income tax. Yes. And that's why Warren Buffett pays, uh, pays so little. Yes. Now, he pays some corporate tax, you know, on the, on the business, but now the corporate tax, as we've discussed, is so low. Yes. So combine those two things, and that's why we think, and that's what we explain in the book, that billionaires are the ones who pay the lowest rate relative to their yes. true economic income because they can bypass, you know, the, the current tax system. Yes. Which is, I mean, the, the, the ultimate paradox. Uh, um, at a certain point, you, you, you do a calculation, the beginning maybe, in which you said, you calculate that uh, if uh, you would um, double the marginal rate, which is now of the top percentile, which is now 0.001%, uh, there, there would be a significant difference, I mean, in what you can get. I don't know, 100 billion dollars, something like that? Oh, Maybe yes, I'm, I'm, I'm making some confusion yes. here. Yeah. No, yes, what, what we explain is that, yes, by taxing the rich much better, yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. you yeah. could get, you know, significant revenue. Yes. In, uh, <clears throat> you, you could get something, you know, like three points of GDP uh, uh, extra, yeah. which in the U.S. context uh, is big money because, you know, the U.S. has such a large concentration of income uh, at the top. So, so the stake about taxing the rich better is not just symbolic, you know, Trump and Buffett, yes. it matters in terms of the overall revenue, you know, that you can collect and therefore the spending you can, uh, you can do as a, as a society through the government. Yes, and, and by saying to taxing the rich better, uh, do, do you mean many different things, no? To, to, sum, to sum it yes. up, uh, cut the loopholes and then what? Yeah. Yes. So the, the pillars we've discussed yeah. is make the tax hard to avoid yes. and evade on the corporate side, on the individual side, and then increase tax rates and impose, you know, those minimum taxes, you know, on those who try to uh, uh, cheat uh, uh, by uh, parking their profits uh, abroad. Yes. Yeah. But you, you don't want to be more specific on... You don't want to put a number. I mean, that does the sixty percent that we discussed at the very beginning would be yes. a reasonable percentage for you? Yes, it is. There is currently, you know, yes, the, the top one percent in the U.S. pays a little bit more than thirty percent yes. of their income in taxes. We calculate that you could double that rate so that they would pay twice as much something like 60% yes. of their income, similar to what they used to pay, you know, back in the, in the days. 50s and 60s. Yeah. And by doing that, you'd collect, you know, like uh, three points of uh, GDP more in taxes. Okay. Which is a uh, tantamount to $100 billion, probably? No, it's, it's, it's more like uh, $600 billion. Ah, okay. Ah. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Six hundred billion dollars a year, which could uh, uh, may may make up of s some other um, problems that you have. I mean, you quoted the, the, you don't have any um, assistance for the the kids, and and the, the, there's no maternity leave for women. So, I mean, yes. uh, what wh what could you do with that six hundred billion dollars more a year? Where would you put them? The, the, the U.S. has obvious gaps uh, in its uh, welfare state. Yeah. One of them uh, is indeed, you know, there's no uh, preschool that is before yeah. age, you know, uh, uh, six. There's no uh, before age, uh, 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 sorry, age uh, five. Yes. There's no uh, public schools. For, for the kids, yes. so that makes it complicated for parents and, of course. and mothers yeah. uh, uh, to work. Mostly on mothers. One, yeah. Yes, mostly mothers. Uh, that's one obvious uh, gap. The second gap we have is that we still don't have universal health insurance. Yes. There remains, you know, something like 10% of the population that doesn't have uh, insurance, so that's obviously something 
the U.S. is the only rich country that doesn't yes. have universal health insurance, so it's an obvious, it's an obvious gap. Okay. Um, can you explain to me why, from an, econom an economist uh, point of view, uh, it makes sense to shrink the, the wealth of rich people? So, because it, according to you, somewhere in the book, I mean, you said it does make sense to 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 shrink the also with almost confiscatory um, um, inheritance taxes that now are are uh, disappear almost. But yes. it makes economic sense to shrink the uh, the, the the wealth of of uh, rich people. So, the, the the strongest case you you can make for this is that wealth uh, at the very top yeah. is obviously power. Yes. You know, you build your wealth, you know, through big businesses that then have a huge influence on society. We see it with Amazon, Facebook. Yes. Uh, so it gives enormous power uh, to the people who control and own, you know, those uh, uh, corporations. And once you've acquired power, you're in a position where you can defend your position and indeed that's what we see you know those large companies they are careful to either buy the competition or destroy uh, the uh, yeah. competition so we think it's actually not good to have such powerful entities you know controlled by uh, 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 billionaires and therefore a wealth tax is a useful uh, tool you know to make sure uh, fortunes don't last as long because they will progressively erode the wealth tax. So you can still, with a wealth tax or with an inheritance tax, build a fortune, but it's not going to last as long. Uh, you know, one generation later, or uh, uh, you you will no longer have the same family, you know, controlling uh, the business. Okay, so, so in that sense, uh, progressive taxation on the very rich is a way to make sure there is more mobility at the very top. That is, uh, uh, once you get rich, you don't stay rich uh, as long. Yes. We think that's good because entrenched wealth is actually not good for the dynamism of the, uh, of the economy. Yeah. It's something you can see clearly if you look at less advanced countries like Russia, controlled by the oligarchs. Latin America used to be controlled, you know, by the big landowners that stifles uh, yeah. economic, uh, economic growth. Of course, you are, you are perfectly aware that this single point can be weaponized against you by, by large swaths of American society or neoliberal thinkers saying that, uh, I don't know, it's a social envy, I mean, that you are anti-rich people. How do you defend yourself? I mean, I can I can see the people from the National Review attacking you with an axe by yes. daring to say that uh, you you should uh, do that. Yeah, in, in the end, you you know, you you have to look at different societies historically across countries and decide what model works best. And in, in the case of the U.S., if I look at that era, you know, the post World War II decade, where there was extremely progressive taxation. Yes. I could see a very dynamic economy that had high growth and distributing that growth equally. And that strikes me as a better system than uh, what we have now, where we have low growth and where we have a very large fraction of growth uh, captured by, uh, uh, by the top. And, uh, and, and you could make you know, the same case in Europe. Europe, after World War II, was developed, you know, with a very big rise in uh, government and the, the welfare state, and those were the best decades, you know, for European uh, growth. And so that's a model that I like better uh, than the current model, you know, of uh, Europe organized, you know, as a tax competition, uh, ever lower uh, tax rates, you know, on big corporations, and you see people actually rejecting the model, you know, Brexit, yeah. the type of elected officials you've had in Italy, those are strong reactions yes. against, you know, the, the way the current system uh, works. Yeah.
last few questions because I mean in order of course I totally agree with with, with what you just said and, and with the whole book to be honest but you are aware that in order to sell this proposition I mean that the, the too much wealth is bad for the whole society apart from you uh, uh, Gabriel Zuckman uh, Thomas Piketty and and uh, Robert Reich and some other things, but, but it's still a tough sell. I mean, as you said before, it took the political genius of Ronald Reagan in order to reverse the le, le, le Trump Glorious or, or the Gilded Age of capitalism, I mean, and to sell something else. What do you need? Who, which politician you would need in order to, to sell your 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 mother right now because I don't see one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if I look at the United States, I'm uh, <clears throat> one can have reasons, you know, to 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 be to be uh, hopeful or at least to see signs that uh, the current model is not working. So in negative, you know, the fact that so many people, especially you know, the low. Uh, uh, Low people with lower education, <clears throat> white people for, with low education who have not been doing that well economically, they vote for Trump. You know, yeah. that cannot happen if it's it's if it's if they weren't very unhappy with the current system. You don't vote for a crazy politician like Trump yeah. unless you have a deep, you know, feeling that the, the current system is not working for you. On the left. <clears throat> Radical proposals, you know, by Bernie Sanders, yes. Elizabeth Warren, have quite a bit of success. So we are really seeing that the, the consensus, you know, the establishment consensus that was so powerful, you know, yes. in, Dem in Democrats, you know, and is also very powerful in Europe, is no longer working. So we, we have to think uh, uh, more broadly than that. And I hope, you know, that it's... Uh, the progressive on the left who are going to win rather than the nationalists, you know, on uh, uh, on the right. But I feel like in the end, we might have to choose between those two things. It's just like the establishment view works well for a relatively small elite, you know, the, people, the highly educated people, people who have good jobs, who live in uh, thriving big cities. It's not working that well for the rest of uh, our, uh, our population. Yeah, even if, unfortunately, both, if, if we look at the US, I mean, the, the best option is that Biden will win, no? Yes. Or in, in France, I mean, it's, I don't think it's the best option, but reality, we have to face reality, you've got Macron, which which is in particular, who's now a, a, a great champion of, uh, I mean, he's a, Neoliberal, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 100% yes. establishment. So I'm trying to push you here because uh, what gives you the optimism? Because I used to be more optimist. I, I've been following the American uh, election cycle. I was with Sanders la last time, four years ago. Yes. And uh, I, I, I had the feeling that this time he could make it. But the reality is that he didn't make it. I mean, I yes. was definitely wrong. What makes you feel that... The, this time, I mean, the, the war and the, the uh, Ocasio-Cortez will will be luckier than... You know, look, I'm not 100% optimism, but what I'm saying is that it's, it's possible to see how things could evolve. You know, if Biden is elected after the trauma, you know, of the Trump uh, presidency, there might be a reckoning in American society that, wow, our model... Uh, was going down, you know, a wrong path. Yeah. And the Biden, you know, platform uh, has become, you know, more progressive, you know, running on climate change, yeah. on uh, uh, healthcare, on taxes on the, on the rich and, and corporations as well. So, so, so we see uh, whether uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be bad. Uh, uh, Stefan, let me put you in the waiting room and I'll be with you in a few yes. minutes. Uh, at the same time, I agree with you. Right now, those are not, they are not elected, you know, so, so, so it, it really could go both ways. I think, you know, 
uh, political developments are hard to predict. And if you read the history, you can see big turns that you couldn't totally forecast. You know, the, and that's true on the left and on the right. We couldn't forecast Trump getting elected. Uh, back in the 30s, you, you wouldn't have been able to forecast, you know, that the U.S. would usher uh, an era, you know, of uh, much more progressive uh, uh, policy. I see. Very, very last quick, quick question. Isn't there any politician who's particularly keen on, on your studies, on your work, who's been asking for help from, from you? Yes, certainly, you know, at the, at the U.S. level, uh, we've worked with Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, helping them, you know, shape their you know, tax policy proposals. Uh, we continue, you know, to talk to to the uh, uh, Biden uh, campaign or the experts, you know, in the Biden campaigns to, to shape some of those uh, policy proposals. At the state level, we've helped, you know, states like California or New York think about taxes on the very rich or on billionaires. So those are not yet, you know, laws that have passed, but they have been a bill, you know, introduced, you know, by people on the left. Uh, in those states, but there is still a, a strong, you know, progressive movement about taxing the rich uh, more. Okay, thank you. Uh, I wish you best of luck for for your book and for your uh, studies. Maybe next yeah. time in when when the COVID will be over and the and the California will will welcome foreigners, we, we will have the chance to, to have a coffee. Okay. Very good talking to you, yes. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.